basically what the dream was about was that I was in the boat, got my ass whooped by a chick, and then all of a sudden I met Ric Flair. Ric Flair it looked like he just passed by and said, hey, hey, how's it going, man? And all of a sudden he said that, you know what, just by seeing that match makes me want to go back into wrestling. You know what? Throw me a giant turtle. I'll wrestle a giant turtle right now. And I'm like, wait, what, what the hell? You want to wrestle a giant turtle? And that's how I woke up. Welcome, everybody, to the Ring Generals podcast. My name is Nick Ninad. Alongside me is Easy e Eric Santos. What's cooking, guys? Our main man, Jesse. What's up, jabronis? And, of course, the RKJ man. Let's talk that talk, y'all. Hypocritical Nick. Had to get some drink in tonight. It's been a long day. Hey, yes. where's your full drink? Where's... <laughs> Mike's Hard Lemonade, sir. Don't don't disrespect that's the mic. That's what he but, said it was. We're not going to comment on what's actually inside the bottle. Uh, what's yes. inside the bottle is delicious it, Mike Hart lemonade. It's apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, man. Whatever you say. It's, it's apple juice, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is it is water. No, I'm just kidding. It's vodka. All right. On the podcast today, we have a very interesting assortment of topics. We have a bunch of complainers that we're going to complain about today and by the names of Rhonda and Adam. And also, we are going to dive into UFC 249 finally getting canceled uh, because postponed. I think we all assumed it might happen. You're right. Postponed. Uh, whatever. But but the uh, the state of California, ESPN, Disney, Mickey Mouse himself decided that UFC 249 was not going to happen, although go. Dana White did have an island and did have an Indian reservation that he was going to run shows on. But guys, let's start about the most recent news to when we're filming this podcast today, and that is Ronda Rousey. She's back in the news for more negative publicity. She is shitting on wrestling fans. She's saying that wrestling's fake again. Uh, completely breaking kayfabe on Twitter, although she still works for the company, uh, WWE, that is. Um, guys, what what's going on, and and do we really care about Ronda Rousey anymore after this these recent comments that she made? Mm, I don't think so, man. I mean, she's been going on for quite a while, and, and uh, I mean, WWE has moved on from her, to be honest, and uh, focusing on the actual wrestlers at hand, and currently in the uh, active state so i mean nope not at all yeah so you're you're kind of over it you're over her her comments and her kind of going over everybody's heads with everything yeah i mean i can see from her perspective she wants to play that as a the heel the bad guy yeah and she's been in the past on the, the live on her tv show with the others um she said she wanted to play as a like the heel the character and I, can, I, I think that's what she's doing right now so in order for her to get back into the mix, you know, uh, I think that's basically going to be helping her up to uh, playing the, the best female bad guy as we've seen, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so RKJ, man, you, you brought this up to us in our group chat today. You brought up the chance that this might be a work. Are you still thinking that? Or what are your thoughts on this? I know you were the first one to bring this up, so it's interesting that Jesse said that. Uh, I have no clue whether it's a work or not. Um, I would hope it's a work. I would pray that she's not that dumb to to say such disrespectful shit about a fan base that welcomed her after she did pretty damn good in the WWE. Yeah. That WrestleMania 34 match got my mom back into wrestling, got a lot of people back watching the product because of how great she did against Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. She yeah. had a great run, but... Ronda Rousey has always done this. She's always destroyed something, whether it's in the UFC and now in the WWE, whether it's a relationship with the fans. And let's not also forget, she doesn't have the best reputation around some of the women. For example, it's been alleged that she injured Alexa Bliss, and that's what caused Alexa Bliss to be out for a year. Nia Jax actually kind of sort of alluded to this on uh, a Twitch stream with Paige and Alexa Bliss and a couple other people earlier this week. You know... And Alexa Bliss came out and said something about it earlier today as well. So it's very frustrating for me for a person that we've kind of started accepting to kind of turn on us and talk shit about us when we made the effort when 
when we were against you at first, we decided to give you a chance and we gave you opportunity. And then all of a sudden, now you're going to turn on us just because we're voicing our opinion. It's our right to say what we think about you because we pay the money. As long as we're respectful towards you as a person, that's one thing. But if we're being disrespectful, I can understand yeah. where the frustration comes from. But I, I don't understand where this anger and this hatred is coming from. And she's about to get ostracized in the locker room if it's not a work. But I think it may be a work. Eric, uh, I want you to give your comments on this. Uh, do you do you think it's a work? Uh, and if not, what do you think happens with Rhonda now? It's very dicey because looking at how she approached this tweet, and then later on how she was saying how she was trying to say that, yeah, it is tough uh, going out there 365 days a year, you know, busting your ass off. But she does throw out some of the choreograph and the pre, you know, predetermined results, at, uh, obviously what pro wrestling is. But then again, she was like that at the end of towards towards uh, WrestleMania 30. Five. I'm I'm just so mixed up with numbers with 30s and 35 yeah. and 36. Yeah. So I just can't even tell. Last year's WrestleMania. So that being said, Ronda Rousey uh, went out as the heel. So she, at the end, by Survivor Series all the way to WrestleMania 35, she went out as the heel, and then she's still playing that as the heel. I mean, right now she's doing everything she can to uh, be that heel. She's doing really good, and. I I did I do smell a work on this one. I do smell that yeah. there is a work for this because I see hashtag kayfabe killer. So you can you can see this coming more and more frequently in the next coming I don't know maybe weeks or months. So I think that she's going to keep doing this over and over until maybe she might I don't know maybe have another return and then do another same thing. So I really feel like because I do see Shayna Baszler as well defending Ronda Rousey saying that how dare I think it was on her tweet. She said that how dare Ronda Rousey uh, defend her family and disrespect the fans who don't love her anyway. And something like, yeah, some, something along the lines of that. It was really um, kind of makes me wonder about some of these wrestlers who are siding with Ronda Rousey. So I look at that part on how many wrestlers side with her. And how many of them are against her? And I did, I did see Nia Jack saying that I, you know, I want to go and knock her out as soon as she gets back into the rings. Oh, yeah, I, love it. I don't know. We might see something on, you know, something like that. Maybe some fuel just to add in. Great storyline though. But at the end, I do smell a work. That's where I stand right now. Just, just to let you know. If it is a work, uh, it's working because we all, we all dislike her right now. Uh, there's a lot of wrestling fans that are mad. Uh, I'm disappointed in her. I, I like to defend the business as much as I can. Uh, and I went on Twitter today and called her the the Kevin Durant of fighting. And oh. the reason I called her this is because she's very, very talented at both MMA and professional wrestling. You can't say she's not. She may have gotten knocked out a couple times in UFC, but to be honest, she put women's MMA on the map. And... I personally think that if she trained enough, she probably could go back and win a couple of fights and may even be able to win a championship if she went back to MMA. Uh, that's, pro if rest boxing, that's if she had a proper boxing coach. Exactly. So there's, yeah. there's easy fixes. And, 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 and then with wrestling, she proved that she can absolutely do it uh, and, and made women's wrestling watchable again. And we see women's wrestling after she left, and it sucked. Okay? I, I'm not going to put it lightly. It sucked both in the AEW and in, in WWE, the only woman that's really flourished since Ronda Rousey left uh, was, was Becky Lynch to a, to a sort and Tessa Blanchard. Uh, but getting back to Ronda Rousey and my comment about Kevin Durant, she's just such a complainer. And, and she has such thin skin for someone that kicks so much ass, right? And it's what irritates me about Kevin Durant, too, in basketball. Uh, Kevin Durant has burner accounts. Uh, on Twitter, he responds to fans. He, he he responds to negativity in a whiny way. We've seen this now with Ronda Rousey three different times. Uh, once after she lost in the UFC, blamed some people, uh, said she was depressed and all this stuff. Um, and then uh, right before WrestleMania 35, in the buildup, she kind of broke the kayfabe character again, a lot like what she did. Uh, and now 
happening again. So if it's a work, hey, I'm fine with it. I think she's going a little too far with it. And I think Vince might need to pull in the reins a little bit and be like, okay, you're literally killing the business. Like you're telling everybody that it's completely fake. And then you're going to go out and be and you know, perform the fake product. That's kind of a ridiculous statement to make. It's kind of hypocritical. Exactly. But if it's a work, I'm okay with it. If not, personally, I don't give a shit if Ronda Rousey shows up in WWE again or anywhere else. Because I don't think if you're going to have that little of respect for the business, we don't need to see you. And I don't really think she's that big of a deal to where we need her in professional wrestling. I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, real quickly, Vince McMahon can't say anything because he was the first one to reveal the fact that wrestling is, well, quote unquote, fake anyway. Very good point. Yes. He can't say anything about it anyway. I mean, but this Ronda Rousey thing, I, I don't understand her mindset for what she's trying to do here. Like, because we fully accepted her after WrestleMania 34. And to be honest with you, the only reason why people started turning on her was because of Becky Lynch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if Becky Lynch, if Ronda Rousey would have decided it to stay, and Becky Lynch, let's say, for instance, would have, if Ronda would have gotten moved to SmackDown, I think she would have been a major star. She People would have still been cheering her. But I guess she's upset because people decided that they like Becky Lynch more than Ronda Rousey. I mean, you can't get upset just because a woman's getting on, a person's getting over on their own organically, right? You can't get upset at that. Yeah. True. What's well, a lack of respect for the business again? She doesn't understand it. The point of professional wrestling is for heels and baby faces to exist. Becky Lynch last year was arguably the top professional wrestler in the world for how much she got over. She got over in part because of how legitimate we took Ronda Rousey, right? Can we all agree on that? That we took Ronda yep. Rousey so legitimate, she, we made her so look so unbeatable that we're like, oh, the fact that Becky Lynch could even possibly beat her is, is insane, right? And then they added Charlotte in the mix as well to, to, to put another superstar over and stuff like that. So, yeah, maybe it's a, it's a she doesn't get it thing. And maybe someone like Triple H or Shawn Michaels can get in her head and explain to her, hey, this is good what happened last year. That's how professional wrestling works. If you don't get that, then maybe you don't belong in the business. But if she's, you know, if she can't figure that out, maybe she took too many punches uh, in the UFC. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just I, I don't understand it. Um, I hope it's a work. Uh, but again, even if it's a work, it's going a little too far anyways. I mean, we can't just be you, murdering the business here on Twitter you, every single day. Do you consider that like cheap heat, you know, in a way? by A hundred percent. I think it's the yeah, cheapest. It's the cheapest heat you possibly ever could get. You know, it, it, it's because it, it is a, it's, it, it's like a TV star going, oh, yeah, I'm going to get killed in season eight. So hate me. Because mm. now I, I, I'm going to get killed, and now you're going to watch the first eight episodes of this season knowing that I get murdered at the end. Well, that just ruins the magic. <laughs> yeah, it, ru it ruins what... Now, this doesn't necessarily do that necessarily, but, you know, for anybody out there that, you know, is going gonna, is gonna to take this the wrong way and is going to look at wrestling in a more negative light, like I said, I'm going to defend the business here. And if Ronda is going to talk shit on the business, I'm going to talk shit on her, and she does not have a good past with reacting to negative criticism. She's one of the worst in professional sports, in my opinion. So, I'm yeah. going to say this. Do not shit where you eat, or meaning do not bite the hand that feeds you, because you're basically going to be screwing yourself over. Yeah, but what, what the hell is she going to do after this? Right? If she, if she loses professional wrestling, who is she? Well, she's trying to get pregnant, but I don't know how that's working out. She Isn't keeps she? Never wanting to come back. And then for whatever reason, real quickly... What's her contract like? She signed a three-year deal. I know. I went back to our old podcast, Enjoy This Ish, and and listened to the fact that we had we talked about a three-year deal. She's been out for like a year now. Like there has to be some type of hidden clause in this contract that states that even if she gets pregnant and whatnot, those two years have got to get tacked back on because she's been gone for way too long for her to be complaining and having an attitude against the fans. I hope it's a work. I hope. To God, she's not this stupid. I really do. I really pray she's not this dumb. Let's not forget. Let's not forget that she's not even pregnant right now. So, I mean, if she's gonna come back, what's the whole point of her taking well, that? Isn't she also like looking into acting? You know, because she did. You know, wasn't she like in a couple of movies too? She was in *The Expendables* Part yeah. Three. 
Yeah. That's one, she's on that TV show 911, I guess, or has had a role. Yeah, so show. that could be another factor. That I guess she's exploring her options after this. I mean, who knows? After the contract is up, uh, she could possibly be exploring uh, other options. I mean... But she, didn't she want to leave? Look, man, she, she, she's she been talking some bad shit for a while now, to be quite frank with you. But we're complaining about wrestling fans getting upset about wanting to know what she wants to do afterwards because she wants to get pregnant about her body. Like, we invested all this time into supporting you, and yet you're going to leave us. <laughs> and then when you leave us, you talk crap about us, and then you don't even go do the thing that you wanted to do. You were supposed to get pregnant. She hasn't gotten pregnant yet. It's so what are you doing? Now she's shitting on everybody in the business. She's sitting on all the wrestlers, like, and all the fans that make her, that have paid money to see her, and that have respected her. Everybody I've talked to have said, you know what, Ronda Rousey, it's been a year, but she made an incredible amount of progress. So we all respect her for that. But if she's going to continue to disrespect us and treat us like garbage, then we're going to treat her like garbage. Oh, I mean, 100%, yeah, 100%. What it's, you saying, Jesse? it's no different from the UFC fans, too, because after she lost to Holly Holm, they unloaded a bunch of stuff on her. Like, they started roasting. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I mean, Let's not forget that the UFC fans are a little bit somewhat different than the WWE fans. Yeah. The UFC fans will, like, torch you as soon as your fight is over. As soon as you lose. 100%. They They're just like vultures. Fight. You know, they, they become like vultures as soon as, like, you get your ass whooped. I mean, how many people? They get the scraps. They go get the scraps. Whatever's left of you, they kind of chew that up and spit it out. I mean, at, yeah. least, at least in the WWE fans, they actually I mean, appreciate you. They kind of... They kind of want to know what you're doing afterwards, like you said, uh, right, Brian. And, well, uh, and by the by the way, like it, it, we're talking about, um, you know, the 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 fact that she, you know, the reason she's bad is essentially because we she didn't accept herself as a heel, even though she was playing the heel role, yeah. right? That's essentially what we're talking about. But here's who you know who's been booed also in professional wrestling: John Cena, Roman yeah. Reigns, The Rock. So does Rhonda think she's just above all those people for some reason that she can't get booed? I guess look, I guess from what from from my kind of picture or kind of see what she's thinking is that when she was in the UFC, she had that superstar star, uh, stardom, you know, with Dana White kind of putting on her pedestal. Yeah. While um, while the others weren't in the past. I mean, other than John Jones, Conor McGregor, Style Bender, mm-hmm. before those guys, or maybe afterwards. Um, She's been put on that pedestal, like you said before. She's been, she kind of somewhat put MMA, women's MMA on a map, and she got kind of used to that being that top ranked uh, professional. And now that she's not, she wants to be up there again. I could kind of see why she's doing that, uh, but I mean, it's not going to happen. If you transition to a different business and you expect to be on the, the best of the best, you can't really be the best. You have to earn your way. Cena has earned his way. Brock Lesnar has earned his way. Um, Roman Reigns has earned his way. Like all those guys, like you mentioned before as well, they earned the way to be the top and they earned it. I mean, they deserve to be up there. But yeah. right now, the way that she's behaving, the way she's acting, ain't going to get her that way. As long as she thinks she might get it, but she won't get it. No, no. And you make a lot of good points there, Jesse. It, it, it's just, you know, we, we've seen Conor McGregor get shit talked on Twitter a- a- after he's lost fights and stuff. Like it, yeah. it's just. If for some reason, Ronda Rousey just thinks she's above everybody else in a lot of these scenarios. And like again, Ronda, if, if this is a work, you're doing a great job because we believe it. Uh, well, Eric doesn't. Uh, Eric's got the snit. Eric's got pushing the snitch button. There, the uh, you know, he's <laughs> Eric's over there. Like, I I did not think he was going to say it was a work. I thought Ryan 100 percent was going to say it was a work for sure. <laughs> so I'm excited that I'm excited that somebody said that because then we would have kind of had a blank uh, segment, but. I just smell the work, dude. I just smell it. I mean, it's just like the the uh, ingredients are there. I'm like, oh yeah, definitely. It's cooking. Like, it's cooking. Yeah, I, you yeah. know, BS. In, in honor of Vice's most recent episode of Beyond the Behind the uh, or uh, what Dark is it? Ring. Jesus, Dark Side, Dark Side of the Ring. Of the ring. God, I almost said Beyond the Ring. Uh, in honor of Vice's Dark Side of the Ring uh, Brawl for All episode. Let's get Ronda Rousey in there and have her fight a couple of the women for real in the ring. I want to see her versus Nia Jax for real. If she can back up this shit that, that she says, you know, wrestling's so fake and, and the athletes aren't real. 
I, step in there. I'm sure Ronda would win, but let's get her in the ring with uh, Shayna Baszler or someone like that that's had an experience, right? Like, let, let, let's see what happens. I mean, I mean Shayna, she's a bliss. She'll get she's she's a chance. friend, though. So she won't fight her friend, first Who? of all. Shayna Baszler's a friend. She's, she was her training partner. You put enough money on the line, they will. Possibly. But I doubt it. But anyways, but like Nia, Nia Jackson, on the other hand, uh, who who knows? Let's do it, you know? That's a dicey yeah. one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep Alexa Bliss away, though. Alexa yeah. Bliss uh, was bad. Here's the thing about Alexa Bliss. Okay, I, you know, I I don't, what was her injury? Was it a concussion? No, yeah. it was a back it was injury. A bad concussion. Was it? That was a back injury. Back injury, concussion. Ronda Rousey kind of allegedly tore her up, tore her body up. Yeah, it makes sense because Alexa Bliss isn't a wrestler. She's not a wrestler at heart. She was a, you know, performer. It was she was a, a weightlifter. What what do you call it? A um, gymnastics. Yeah, fitness model. So yeah. it's not like she's, you know, she's not coming from a background of. Uh, she was in uh, gymnastics. Yeah, Eric was yeah, right. she was doing. Yeah, from what I know, she was doing gymnastics, and I think she did cheerleading, and then. She went on to do weightlifting, and then yeah, she was. But she was essentially signed for what she looked like. That, that and I'm not saying that with her, with her looks, uh, like 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 her attractiveness. I'm saying because of the fact that she weightlifted, and 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 I think Triple H saw something in her and, and saw that. But so, you know, that's not the same as Ronda Rousey, who was an Olympian, UFC fighter. You know, you get those two in the ring, and it's going to be difficult. We saw we saw you know Becky Lynch get beat up a couple times. Oh, Charlotte a- Charlotte really get beat down in a couple. But you know, what I'm saying it, it's. It's tough living in there. And that's why we yes, liked Ronda thing. Rousey. Ronda Rousey brought the Brock Lesnar element, that realism element to, to professional wrestling. That's why we liked it. And I just a lot of us don't understand why she's being such a baby about this. It just doesn't doesn't make sense. But in my mind, it also does because she's the Kevin Durant of fighting. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm done. That's that, 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 so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, okay, speaking of complainers, uh, we're going to move to to Edge. Uh, I did not think we'd be talking about Edge in this manner, but obviously if you watched WrestleMania 36 and if you watched our WrestleMania review, which a lot of you did, so we thank you for that, of course. Uh, Of course, like, subscribe, and comment. Go under this video right now. If you've gotten this far, what are you doing? Why haven't you just liked the video? It's so easy. Uh, why haven't you subscribed? Don't you want to see our content? Come on. We're one of the few entities that's going to sit here and shit on Ronda Rousey like this. Okay? You know, we don't care. Now, if Ronda Rousey showed up at my door, I'm running away. But, you know. Just stick but, your dog onto her, dude. Yeah, so that's true. That's true. I'll stick my dog onto her. She, she'll run away. Hey, Trust. Ryan, you bring your dog over. I'll bring my dog. Like We'll combine the dogs. We'll have a double. Yeah, I like it. I like our little plan here. Uh, <laughs> we don't have the, we don't have the, uh, the training background that Jesse and Eric do. So we, we got to use exterior motives to win the fight. You know? Use your chairs. Yeah. Uh, yeah exactly. Use all the weapons we can. Um, I'm gonna use that Mike's hard le- lemonade bottle too on her. Oh, now, guys. Oh, that, okay. That, that, it's empty. We're, we're kidding. We're not gonna beat up a female. Jesus Christ, guys. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but so it, 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 back to what we were talking about. Um, if you watch WrestleMania 36, you obviously uh, saw Edge and Randy Orton, Last Man Standing, went a little long. A lot of people said that they complained. Why wasn't it filmed like the Boneyard match? like Johnny Gargano and Ciampa, like um, John Cena and Bray Wyatt. Uh, it was just kind of a false count anywhere match where not a lot went on. Um, some said uh, that Bret Hart came out and, and apparently told Edge that he liked the match because it seemed like a real fight. Uh, others have come to the defense of Edge. Uh, but a lot of fans in general did not like the fact that did not like the match. And, and again, they gave their criticism on what they liked. And, and most people that aren't like Edge or Randy Orton fans didn't like that match. Okay. And, and, but so what happened was Edge came out and, and kind of, you know, he, he kind of just defended himself. And it wasn't as bad as what Ronda Rousey did. Uh, I'm trying to find the quotes here on this website real quickly. But does anybody know exactly what he said as far as the quote goes? I can pull it up right here. It might take me a second. I think he said that there's a section or a particular part of the audience that always complains, that always finds something negative in what's going on. 
Yeah, this is his exact quote was, uh, "I just think there is a segment of people that enjoy not enjoying things and dwell on negatives, but I focus on positives." But like I'm saying, this wasn't a segment of the audience. This was most of the audience. This was the majority of the audience that watched this match. So, guys, why do you think Edge is having this response? Why didn't he just come out and say, "Under the circumstances, it was tough." I apologize. You know, like said, why did he come and kind of attack some of the fans here? I mean, I, I kind of understand why he said it and the way he's defending himself. Because, I mean, if you're like if you're performing or you know you're in a match, you just gotta you just gotta think about the the bright side of things and not focus on the negatives, like he said. And uh, I mean, if you're gonna be thinking negative, I don't think the match will come out as great as it would have been. And yeah. um, Look, I know a lot of people will have nerves before a competition or anything else. Because, I mean, I, I remember I, I had my matches and I was really nervous. And, you know, I, I couldn't really shake out of it until I was in that moment. And I wasn't thinking about it. So I wasn't really thinking about anybody else other than myself and try to get that W. And that's what about the bright side of being a positive or being a champion. I mean, but the negative side, yeah, it could have... <laughs> That match itself could have kind of cut down a little shorter, you know. But uh, it is what it is right now, so uh, that's it. Eric, what do you think about uh, Edge's response and, and kind of calling some of us out? I mean, when I threw out my criticism of the match, I didn't say the entire match. The only thing I said was it got good towards the end. It's just that it dragged on. and there 37 was- minutes. Yeah, so the last few minutes of the match, I thought it was getting good. So it's just that it kept, it just didn't feel like it didn't pick up the pace in a way. And I think in Edge's mind, he probably focused more on the the more negative guys who said more awful things that said things about Edge, about him and his wife, or Orton personally, probably attacked him personally. I think Edge focused more on those kind of people who – really tore apart the match and then attacked Edge personally. Probably asked Edge, well, we deserve this, we deserve that, we want this, we want that. Yeah, I think those are the fans that probably Edge is referring to. And I don't think it's fans that are, like, giving constructive criticism. So, you know, I think that Edge, you know, I understand that he couldn't wrestle the way he wrestled due to his neck injury. I I don't know how good he is with his neck as of right now, so I I can see his part. Him and Orton tried to tell as much as they could with the story on that match, but it just wasn't... uh, I think fans just expected too much. Maybe they expected, you know, blood and gore, or they expected something to really hurt themselves or get concussed. I think that's what they expected, and that's why they were let down. But uh, I just, you know... As just me being a fair fan, I had to be fair as uh, as much as possible. And the only thing I just said is that, okay, well, just watch the last few minutes of the match. I mean, just at least the last few minutes. The rest is just, just trim off the fat. You don't need all that, you know, time consuming, just go on around the tables and just hit each other in the gym as well. I mean, the, necess- the unnecessary stuff, like you don't need that, but... But yeah, like I said, I think Edge just focused more on the the more negative fans, like the ones who are harsh on him. I think that's what I, that's what he was focusing on. Yeah. Ryan, in, in this article, he also makes a comment about he says uh, and this is his quote: "Complain about the length of a wrestling match during a pandemic? Really? Come on. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think we're not allowed to criticize anybody because of the coronavirus? I think that's bullshit. Yeah." <laughs> I, That's look, what I wanted. Right there. Here's here's the problem. Here's the problem. Wrestling used to be about 10 million people in 2001. It shrunk down to about 2 million, barely 2 million right now. You want to piss off the 2 million fans that you already got, and these wrestlers seem very content with pissing off these 2 million people that are sticking by their product, who are buying the network who are buying tickets to these shows, and who are emotionally invested in these shows. Here's the problem, okay? I respect Edge. I respect the journey he took uh, to come back. I love his WWE documentary, which is fantastic. If you haven't watched it, you should go watch it. But the problem is, is that doesn't excuse you from the fact that you just had a bad match, and it was your first match back. 
Maybe it wasn't the right opponent. I mean, maybe it was a situation where I remember he said how they were going to do things in the day and the nighttime and things got switched because Florida issued a stay at home order during their time. Whatever happened, you have to be able to adjust. Life is all about adjustments. Something doesn't work out. How can we move forward? Edge didn't do that. Edge and Randy Orton didn't do that, and they had a long match. I heard it actually went 42 minutes. They only cut six minutes off. So think about the time that was spent on that match. Do you think we could have gotten an extra five more minutes of Shayna Baszler and uh, Becky Lynch? Yeah. Or maybe even ten more minutes. It, just, yeah. it doesn't make any sense for me personally to keep criticizing the fans when you are at fault. It's not because we are negative, because a lot of these same fans that are criticizing Edge was marking out a couple of months ago in January when he returned at the Royal Rumble. It's about being fair and about being passionate about our sport, being passionate about what we love and saying, hey, guys, we think you could do better here. The WWE has always prided itself on listening to its audience, but it seems like over the past five to ten years, what they've done is they said, no, we're not going to listen to the audience. We're going to tell them what we want them to know, what we want them to be. We're going to tell them who we want them to like. And so that's why you have the fan rebellion. That's why you have the fans getting getting on Twitter and being very frustrated because social media it gives us more access to anybody ever before. So I, I just think Edge is being disrespectful to the wrestling fans. And i got to tell you the truth. It's made me lose a lot of respect for Edge personally. You know, him not being able to come back and being able to deliver is one thing. But then disrespecting the fans for your mistakes is another thing. Yeah, it's just funny you say 42 minutes, right? And how that match specifically, kind of getting back to what we did on a review. You know, we watched uh, NXT produce Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa uh, this past Wednesday. That match spanned uh, an hour on TV, but with commercials. And that was filmed, and that was a culmination of a somewhat similar type of feud. Right now, the Gargano Ciampa you know, feud has been going on for years and years. Edge and Randy Orton has gone back to the Royal Rumble. But I mean, the, ways, the way Randy Orton was, was treating people and was treating Edge's family members, it kind of had a similar feel, WWE style, to Ciampa and Gargano. So all they really had to do was make that match that match, that, that all that's really because Trump and Gargano literally did Edge versus Randy Orton essentially, but just filmed it like they it was the exact same thing. Uh, you know the, they put the Last Man Standing stipulation on Edge and Randy Orton, which which, which you could also have done for this, right? They kind of just he just said whoever gets knocked the hell out in this match wins the wins the match. So. Um, if they're, you're going to spend 37 minutes, you're going to spend 42 minutes. Hey, if you're not going to take the time off Becky and Shayna, why not film it theatrically? We all would have loved it. Instantly, if it was just filmed, I think we would have loved it so much more. I honestly think. But I just think we're kind of over the whole no arena thing. It's not anybody's fault, but it's just more boring. Okay? It's more boring. I like wrestling with fans. Okay? There's nothing we can do about it, but... I like wrestling with fans. Okay, I like that AEW puts people on the guardrail. That's at least better than everybody just sitting there like that, right there. Okay, that it's just what we're doing right now is better than than than. <laughs> oh, Jesse, yeah. you can't laugh. It's got to be quiet. <laughs> you know, what's funny is that I did hear some. I did hear crickets in one of the uh, episodes of Raw and SmackDown. I did hear crickets. That's and, uh, unreal. You did. I think I did. I don't know. I, I'm not sure if it was inside the, the TV or I think it might have been my house. I don't know. One of them. I've, so. I've heard people actually talking backstage. It's I have to. Bad. It's yeah. so Damn. bad. That is so bad that they can't edit that out. There's people talking backstage. Bruce Pritchard <laughs> is yelling at the top of his lungs, five more minutes. And I can hear that <laughs> shit in the back. Hey, look, I'm surprised. It's, you know. The only thing that's just saying is that AEW, at least they create atmosphere by having some of the wrestlers making some noise. I understand what they're trying to do, but you got to applaud them for that. At least these guys are cheering, making some noise, giving, you know, rooting for wrestlers. I'll give them that. That's what I love about AEW. Yeah. I just don't get it. Um, why, if WWE is going to make everybody go to work, why they can't just have them on the ring? Like, if everybody's 
safe and everybody's not sick, what's the problem of having them out there on the guardrail? I, I don't. Hey, man, not everybody's safe. Not everybody's safe. Well, no, but I'm saying if everybody can perform, can't they stand on the guardrail? I like, don't know what the issue is with Florida. There could be some, because I know that AEW episodes, those AEW episodes have been taped in Georgia. And I know oh, Georgia that's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. super behind. They just, just got the stay at home order. So Florida might have said, hey, there can't be more than 10 people. But I mean, at the end of the day, this whole WWE, AEW, and really I criticize both companies. Like, honestly, we shouldn't be doing wrestling. Like, so there's more important things than professional wrestling right now. And, you know, I'm reading reports that apparently WWE is concerned that they can't do as many live, they can only do so many tape episodes because then the networks are going to criticize them. But Vince has an army of lawyers at his disposal. He can't find a loophole to where it's like, hey, you know, with this coronavirus thing going on right now, like, do I really need to be running live television? Like, this is a danger to everybody. I mean, an employee just got COVID-19, allegedly, that we just found out about today. So it's only a matter of time before it spreads like wildfire through the locker room. Yeah, that wasn't even allegedly, too. WWE admitted that, that, that an employee that hadn't had any contact with, with the wrestlers had uh, the coronavirus and had already um, recovered. So this must have happened around when they were taping WrestleMania and stuff like that. So apparently nobody right now, they at least haven't said nobody right now is sick. We saw some rumors that we're not going to say because we don't know if they're true or not. But um, yeah, the one thing I'm going to say about the whole that nobody should be filming. Obviously, AEW is not filming anymore. They, they taped a bunch of shows in advance. And I honestly, I would be okay right now with WWE filming a month's worth of shows, three weeks worth of shows in advance, because I get it. If the networks need you to put programming on, then just tape it. You know, you're in a difficult situation where you are an essential, um, you know, part of society, your TV. So, you you know, you're, I guess, at risk more, um, right, for this, but... To just film live every single week, like like they're saying they are, uh, that makes no fucking sense at all. I, I'm just gonna say it right there. It makes no sense. It it, it just is da- endangering everybody. It's making every, it's making three different days. People are gonna have to show up and drive and go from different. Like it just doesn't make sense. Do it like AEW did, and then every month film another three weeks of shows if this extends. Right? Like just you know you have that that couple days where you're like, hey guys. Anybody that's that's that, that we're you know we're gonna do our best to find tests all that stuff we're gonna get into this we, you know we'll, we'll get into this more when this stuff actually happens but um, you know that's just my opinion what's your guys' opinion on that on 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 my view of, of just taping all these shows in advance and not doing any live shows I mean I'm not I'm not gonna say anything about that part but I will say this I'd rather see Vince Vince McMahon find an island buy it. And have it performed there. I mean, if Dana White is trying to look for that, might as well Vince. Come it's, on, those it's guys. Just, it's Jesse. How about uh, he buys off Epstein's island? Jesus, I mean, Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nobody's nobody has it. It's a, little, grim, it's a little grim, but hey, why not? Nobody's, hey, Eric, I, I, I think, think that's, that's the podcast goes to Eric Santos. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Santos with the controversial statement See, of the podcast. What, what you guys don't understand about the dynamic of our podcast is that Eric says stuff like that all the time. I know. He's <laughs> just very safe on the podcast. And it's amazing that he just said that live. I Oops. can't I, I, I love that he said that right now. But that's now the opening clip. That's not the opening clip, right? <laughs> we we forced him to tell a story about his dream to start the podcast. But anyways, get back to the yeah. topic. Yeah, okay. But so, uh, Jesse, you made a good point. Uh, we'll we'll move on. Like I said, we'll talk about the 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 TV stuff later at, at another podcast, probably the next one. But yeah. um, moving on, you mentioned that a, a certain multimillionaire bought an island to to hold fights on, and that was Dana White. Dana White also had reserved an Indian reservation in California to put fights on. And we were ready to watch uh, UFC 249 on April 18th. We, Jesse, Eric, and I were getting ready to to do a UFC show and and do our whole thing. And then completely shut down uh, the the heads of ESPN, the heads of Disney, 
And it went all the way up to the California governor, essentially said this is not happening. And Dana White, uh, rightfully so, backed down once that happened. Um, guys, uh, RKJ, I'll give you your thoughts on this first. Um, what did you think about uh, when you heard the news that that this was finally going to get, everything was going to get postponed? Uh, I was happy. And here's the reason why. First of all, people want to see Khabib versus Ferguson. I know you guys love that Justin Gaethy dude, whatever his name is, but whatever his name is, I don't care. He's not credible enough for me to care about. The casual fans don't give a damn about Justin, whatever his name is. Okay, uh, uh, we care uh, about uh, Khabib uh, versus uh, Khabib versus Ferguson. Okay, so to give us an interim main event like that is kind of a disappointment in the first place. Number two, this is hard economic times for everybody. Okay, almost seven million people don't have jobs, have filed for unemployment. You're really going to ask people to pay almost $60 for this right now when people don't even know how they're going to pay their rent? That to me just seems like a dick move for Dana White to do. And then number three, we're at a stay-at-home order. If all these sports leagues are, are closing up, what makes Dana White think he's so special? What makes him think because he's professional fighting? I mean, the only reason why these fighters wanted in the first place to come out wherever it was, whether there's an island or Indian reservation, was because of a concern about pay. They looked at what was going on with the NBA and MLB and NHL, rumors being that people aren't getting paid their proper amounts because of the coronavirus pandemic and not having the TV deals. They looked at it and said, okay, we want that money. So if we got to go into a situation where we could get the coronavirus, we're going to risk it to get our money. Dana White has come out and said that he's going to honor all of those fights. So I hope he does. But for me personally, Dana White seemed like he was selfish. He seemed like he was being manipulative. He seemed like he was only thinking about himself. He still wanted to charge people a, the same amount of money. And it just doesn't make any sense when people are barely able to pay their rent right now. So – why would I make a decision if I can't pay my rent or I got to put food on my table to sit down and watch a $60 pay-per-view with some Justin, whatever his name guy is, going up against Ferguson? Why would I care about that? I don't give a damn about that. I'm going to be, I, I'm going to take a risk on Khabib, but Khabib can't even get out of Russia. If he wanted Khabib to get out of Russia, he could have sent a plane over there just like Vince McMahon did to Drew McIntyre. Vince McMahon got Drew McIntyre out of the United Kingdom before restrictions happened. That's what he did. Dana White could have did the same thing with Russia, could have gotten Khabib out of there so he could have had this fight. But we're not going to have we're not going to have this fight. So I don't know why he's doing it. It's just a selfish thing. He's a boneheaded dude. And I keep calling these guys Dana White, Vince McMahon, slave masters, modern day slave masters. They put these dudes out, uh, women and dudes out on the fields in this situation, in wrestling rings and octagons, and tells them to go fight. And they're not willing to take the risk themselves. So in my opinion, Dana White is scum. And I don't like him, and I don't care about him, and I'm glad this fight is over. I'm glad it's done. You can't be doing it. You can't be trying to skirt around the rules like this. California is making a bend in the curve. We are progressing. And for him to bring people out to our state, when we're making a decision to try to keep everybody healthy, is very, very dangerous. And he could spread things onto that Indian reservation, too. So I'm glad the state of California, Governor Newsom, made that decision to call up to the executives. And Dana White, you need to slow your roll because you're a piece of garbage. Uh, All right. Uh, I, that's, I, you know what, right? I, I actually I, I agree with most of you what you said in the beginning of that uh, uh, about the fact that the benefits of this is now that we're going to get Khabib versus Ferguson, hopefully. Uh, you know, when that fight's announced again, we're going to go on the, the – we're going to go on lockdown from saying that those two words, Khabib yep. and Tony Ferguson. Uh, because we broke the rule last time, and then the fight got canceled. Uh, so um, – but, uh, yeah, so – and and the, the one thing that we have here is – Dana White has said that that he was going to he was doing it for people's pay. He was doing it for the UFC workers. He has come out uh, RKJ and he has said that everybody at the UFC nobody will get laid off. Everybody will be paid the same that that they, that they were um, while this is going on while everything's being postponed. So I'm going to disagree with the scum comment as much because I think he's doing a lot better than a lot of other CEOs. 
in America right now, and he's not laying off people, even though he technically could, uh, because the UFC really is based completely off, you know, pay-per-views and, and, and the CSPN deal and stuff like that. But, uh, but so yeah, so Eric, Jesse, you guys are the more resident UFC guys on this podcast in general. What did you guys think about, you know, this finally being canceled and what do you think happens in the future? I mean, I'll kind of, I agree some of the stuff that Ryan said. Uh, I think that the, the event itself should have been postponed prior to like prior to this uh, pandemic. You know, at least while it was, it was going on, while it was like in red, uh, red flagging, um, it should have been postponed like around the same time as Bellator did um, for compensating for their camps and fights. I do not know if he's going to do that or not. I don't know. But at least from my perspective, I think he should because they put in the time and effort, the training camps, and they owe, they owe their training partners. And, uh, and, and, that's in, and that's in part because he kept saying that there was going to be fights, too. Yeah, yeah. So it is essentially Dana White and the UFC's fault that these camps still went, out, went on. Yeah, and yeah. he didn't uh, – and the last minute and everything broke down. I mean, uh, Tony and, and uh, Justin were about to, you know – about to get ready camp was basically around the corner it was about to end and you know they were up and ready to go ready to go and uh and for this to all break down it kind of sucks for them because they put their they basically wasted time for nothing and um and yeah i mean it's it's a really bummer it's a really you know shitty situation where we're at right now uh due to this pandemic and yeah i mean this thing should have been postponed a while ago, at least to the point to it, this thing, post, uh, this whole thing blows over, and you know the winner between those two will fight for Khabib for the title. Because let's not forget this: this is not an interim title, not not a title, you know, not an actual championship fight um, in its place. And you know, we're kind of surprised because there was rumors that Conor McGregor is going to step in instead of instead of Justin Gaethje and his coach Kavanaugh. Coach Kavanaugh said there's no way he's gonna, you know, go in and fight, you know, Tony Ferguson not not being well prepared and you know, and Justin Gaethje just stepping in like that. It's pretty amazing from his part. And uh, fans love him, Ryan. Fans love him. So he's a badass in my book. He's a he's a de definitely a badass motherfucker. I'm gonna say that. Yes, I said that. Um, but yeah, I mean. There's a lot of things that this thing could have been sorted out and could have been dealt with prior to this shutdown. Eric, uh, your kind of put the final ingredients on this, your thoughts on uh, just this whole thing, the whole fiasco of it keeping going, the island, all this stuff, and then obviously it just all coming to a halt pretty much before it ever even started. You know, I just hypothetically, I just kept thinking to myself, what would have happened if, the fight did take place between Gagey and Ferguson because, I mean, what would the outcome be? Because wouldn't that be ruining the potential Khabib versus Ferguson? And then, like, if that was a big if, if Gagey would have beat Ferguson and we would have had Gagey versus Khabib and then we would have passed Ferguson and Khabib, that face-off, that battle, we would just ignore it and we would just put this uh, whole thing to the past. In a way, I, I'm i glad that it got canceled. That way, I mean, they should have done a postponement and we should have just kept the fight between Khabib and Ferguson because now, because now that we had that over with and then we brought in Gaethje to go up against Ferguson, when this pandemic goes, you know, goes away, hopefully it slows down at least, what will happen? Is Gagey going to fight, you know, Ferguson or is Ferguson facing uh, Khabib? You know, so it's going to be that mix up afterwards. So what's really going to what's going to be the fight afterwards? And the card does look tempting, too. I mean, looking at the card, it did look pretty tempting by having well, Rosenstruck and uh, Nganu in that one. And then we were going to looks like we were going to have Rose on my units. But apparently Rose couldn't fight due to the fact that uh two of her relatives uh, had the uh, coronavirus. And that was a shame to hear. So she pulled out and obviously she had to leave 
for the right reasons. So just to take care of family, uh, family business. It's a, it's an unfortunate time that this all happened. And I have to agree with also Ryan on this one is that it, in a way, shape or form, I'm glad that also it got postponed and, or at least canceled because it would endanger the lives of many people. And, you know, in a way, it kind of be like a domino effect if you ask me, because if what would happen if um, Dana White was going to secure that island? I mean, was that going to be like some sort of uh, influence for like other sports to have, you know, now have their sports located on an island? Like now we're going to have basketball being located on an island. Oh, are we going to have baseball being played in an island or what's going on? You know, is that going to be like a domino effect, like a influence in the future? You know, how is that going to affect other sports too? Because Dana White, he did want to say, he did say that he wanted to be the first sports to be uh, broadcasted first, you know, during this pandemic. So that could have had like an everlasting domino effect or like an influence for like other sports to do the same thing too and start doing that. So that could be another factor in which I can see why the show i mean the uh, ufc got canceled obviously it, it does suck but at the same time you know you also got to think about the people out there because they have lost jobs and how are people going to pay off for the rent their food and how are they gonna how are they gonna pay off the 60 dollars? you know that's just the that's just the thing right there you also got to think of it that way i think you gotta like look at it realistically i mean yeah it's just how many people have lost their jobs and how are they going to be willing to pay for the 60 dollars for their pay-per-view i mean as soon as we recover from this whole thing hey i by all means i'll i'll pay for it you know when that a hundred percent i'll watch it (laughs) i mean i'm gonna watch it regardless if it happens or not just because of that if that fight ferguson and and khabib does go down or ferguson gaichi for that that matter uh i'll watch it just because i'm a fan of the sport uh i did want to say one more thing you know this whole island reservation thing don't get it twisted. This was the UFC finding loopholes to escape the U.S.'s um, restrictions, the lockdown restrictions. You know, uh, in the in the United States, if you don't know, uh, the the Native American reservations kind of make their own rules. That's why there's a lot of casinos in states where there's gambling is not legal because they're on Native American reservations. This is where one of the UFC um, events was going to happen. Uh, you, Dana White actually said that an event will happen in the future because of how cool they were about this. Uh, and then obviously the island was going to be in international waters, which again escapes the U.S. restrictions. So I don't believe the NBA, NFL, MLB will do that sort of thing because I think it will look it will look bad on those sports and and, and those. Uh, in those leagues. Ryan, did you have one more thing to say? I saw you kind of getting yeah. giddy up there. Yeah, the, like, the problem I'm having is, is how are these people, and I, I'm talking about everybody, Dana White, Vince McMahon, how are you actually trying to figure out if these people have coronavirus? Because, you know, you know, personally, taking a temperature of a person doesn't really mean... Nope. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Doesn't we, mean anything. It, we have people out there who have coronavirus who are just fine, and they are carriers. They are spreading it everywhere like wildfire. So my biggest issue is, is Dana White, was Dana White willing to get real legitimate tests? Swap them, wait the two to three days, expedite the process, and test people and see if you had coronavirus or not. You know, and if that was the case, then guess what? You're stealing how are you getting those tests? Where are you getting those tests from when millions of when other states and millions of other people out there can't even get tested? You know what I'm saying? So that is another issue I'm saying too as well. Taking tests that are used for essential purposes, and really they're not essential. When there are millions of people out there who need these tests, who need to be checked for coronavirus, aren't getting checked. And guess what? They're walking around totally fine. Like even in my job, we're now testing for fevers and whatnot, but I'm concerned because guess what? One of us could be walking around with the coronavirus and we have a perfect temperature. You never know in these times. Yeah. That's Too true. Much the, the temperature thing also, it, it perfect what I just said, is a loophole. It, it, because we've heard that the coronavirus is, is people are asymptomatic. They don't ever feel any symptoms, really. Like, I, I mean, for 
for the sake of all of us, potentially we could have had it, right? And because none of us have been sick in the last month and a half, right? So it's like we wouldn't have known, and then maybe everybody else we knew had it, and they just didn't know. Show so it's like that's what they, you know, that's what they've told us that that, that that that's a symptom of what happens that there are people that that don't have symptoms. So you're right, Arkady. It's very very good point. I'm glad you brought that up because I don't think any of us were going to bring that up. Yeah. That the, the whole temperature thing with both the WWE and UFC, we don't even know what AEW is doing. Uh, there's outlaws out there over in Georgia. <laughs> uh, for, they probably don't even test. Uh, but, you know, so it's, uh, it's a very interesting situation. We're, we're going to keep following this uh, every single week. We're going to try to bring you again um, our commentary on some of these ridiculous situations that are going on. Uh, hopefully this is a work with Ronda Rousey. Hopefully, Edge gets his head out of his ass, and, and hopefully, uh, the UFC uh, can be up and running with the proper fights in the proper safe manner. Uh, and, and so, so that's it for us today. Uh, this will be released after Easter, so we give you a we, we wish you a happy Easter, and we hope you had a great day. It would have already happened. We were recording prior to Easter, but. Um, yeah, so uh, RKJ Man, take it away, man. Hey, man, like, comment, and subscribe. But as always, <laughs> raise a glass to the sky, salute the re generals. It's the sauce, Alexander, and you're watching the Ring General Podcast. Turn this man around, turn this man around. Subscribe, like, and comment. But raise a glass in the sky and salute the rain general. That's right, that's right. <laughs>